reviews of this movie before watching it. I wanted to know what made this so horrible and what made the audience hate it more than the critics. So to Tubi TV I went and decided to go for the movie Bait. With a shark on the cover, you know what to expect. It's gonna be a shark movie. This guy named Rory is one of the most likable things about this movie. And apparently the guy drinking urchin piss is going to be marrying his sister. The fiance dude has a hangover, so Rory decides to go out and set the bleed for him, even though they usually do it together. This guy has the legs of an Italian pizza. Oh baby, yeah. Mmm. You like what you see? You like that? You like that? I thought her hip was broken for a second. Jesus Christ. How does her hip have more ass than her actual ass? <laughs> I'm up here. Everyone's having fun, and as soon as you see people start getting into the water and it starts going into slow motion, and the camera starts cutting back and forth to people on the beach and people in the water, you know some shit's gonna go down. At least this guy's wearing goggles. Real talk though, how does anyone open their eyes under freaking water, man? I mean, personally, it's bad enough when you get water in your lungs, but then when you open your eyes, you feel like you're drowning by way of vision. Like, your eyes are drowning. I don't know. It's a weird, weird feeling. I hate it. It's just me though, because I don't like anything coming near my eyes, including my own self and my own face. I mean, my whatever. That would be. We have an announcement to make. <laughs> Shortly in the calm before the storm. You ready to leave all this behind? Where you go, I go. <laughs> I didn't answer the question. Don't ever do this, by the way, unless that person is the person who's going to be providing for you or you're 100% okay with it. You shouldn't be giving everything up to follow them around the freaking world. No, there won't be places like this in Singapore. Oh, we'll come back. Bitch, no we won't. And the other guy who's having a good time just stops to, um, lick his goggles? Only to be promptly drawn into the water until his syrupy blood erupts. The lifeguard sees an eruption in the water and somehow automatically knows it's a shark, which makes everyone on edge. And then we remember that Rory the cute little puppy guy is out there. No, not Rory. Honestly, after this happens and I realize that he's the one that's still out there checking the boy and his sister starts screaming for him, my heart breaks. Because even though this movie is barely started, I'm actually scared for him. Go get out! Rory! Get everyone out of the water! The sister is beside herself because she knows that the shark is out there and Rory has no idea what is going on. Josh tries to get out there as fast as he can. He calls out to Rory, but Rory can't hear what he's trying to say. And he's not imagining that a shark's out there is going to get him. And the shark does that weird freaking CGI thing. And I know the CGI was weird, but honestly, this is like one of the only times in the movie where it's horrible. He grabs onto Rory and tries to pull him up. But even though the shark just ate that big ass guy, he's like, no, I got I got the munchies. I got to get this young flesh. I got you. I got you. Okay. <sighs> Like I said, the special effects are kind of trash around this time, but oh my god, I barely know this character and I want to cry for him. I don't know why just a few minutes of screen time that he's had, he's so likable and I just didn't want anything to happen to him. Oh my god, poor Rory. Like, he just, he's just so pure and sweet, it's not fair. I hate that fucking shark. <laughs> It's so unfair, man. Like, I literally want to cry right now because he's so adorable. And he... This is how you cast people. This is how you cast a good person because there are characters that for the entire runtime of the movie, I don't give a shit what happens to them. And this guy barely spoke. But just... How long was he on screen? Like, two, three minutes? And then you just see him in the background maybe for him talking and being up close in the foreground. Shorter than that. And I just want to protect him. I don't want anything to happen to him. The way the sister behaves, the way Josh behaves, it's like... Oh, Rory, oh my god. Like, this isn't supposed to happen with humans. I got you. Why would you sit there saying I got you? Bitch, pull him up. Don't say you got them unless you got them. What the hell was that? Maybe the shark was still holding on to him or something, but... <sighs> Jesus Christ, I don't know why that made me so mad. <laughs> Okay, um, so that took me out of it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do people, do people scream like that? Like, I can understand someone screaming out of frustration and grief, but no one goes, no! Like, no, Nobody does that. Only villains in TV shows do that. Stop it. Just took me the frick out of it, man. But why does the blood look like syrup? And that was the whole introduction of the movie. I, I do like how they did the title card, though. And my guy Julian McMahon is in there. Cole from Charmed. Oh. Of the humpback whales along the 
Some time has passed and this guy is all alone and supposedly 12 months later he's sad just like this. There are a lot of sharks in the area which is uh, gonna be important later. We see that his engagement ring is hung up which means he still loves the girl and she most likely left him. Oh shit. Yo my dude's got Milo? He seems like he's just going through the motions of his everyday life. And then the CGI birdemic crow almost hits into his freaking face. And that's when something happens that you never want to see happen and you'd think as a lifeguard working by a beach like you did before that this is one of the signs that you would know like don't they teach people this in training? Okay, so note to self, if you see a whole bunch of birds that are not Canadian geese or of the same species all flocking from a general direction and you see animals start acting crazy, like for example, one of the dogs nearby the neighborhood started acting weird, go where they're going, because it usually means that there's a natural disaster coming from that direction. But this guy who's a lifeguard sees that and he's like, oh, ain't no thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Cause I was about to get anxious. Seriously, bless whoever made that site. I love you so much. You saved so many people a freaking mental breakdown. We get a whole bunch of characters like the cop, this stupid girl that I cannot stand and her dumbass boyfriend. She gets him a gift, but it's the freaking piece of shit that she just stole from the store that he's working in. What a loser. I'm sorry. Like, and he's a bigger loser for being with her. Oh, Ryan. Yeah, okay, okay. Put him back. But then I have nothing to give you. Doesn't matter, it's the thought that counts. Why are you with a thief? Don't you know that you're gonna be guilty by association? And you work at that place. Obviously, this is the first time she's done this, but he's like, no, come on, put them back, honey. Like, he has some freaking balls. Oh my god. I don't know why the character annoys me so much. Like, she's annoying, but he's more annoying because it's a freaking... I'm not gonna say it. Put him back. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Dumbass water bug with dog guts. The manager calls him out, and this stupid guy is like, Oh, don't worry. My girlfriend's gonna pay for those. You could take it out of my paycheck if you don't believe me. Paycheck if you don't believe me. Paycheck? <laughs> You're living in a dream world, kid. You're fired. Why is he smiling? Why does he look like Michael Jackson with a haircut? Stop. Not that he could ever be Michael Jackson, because, you know, way out of his league. But Timon and Pumbo over here are actually made for each other, because goddamn. In the store that they're at, Josh is working there, and he sees his girlfriend, ex fiance and the sparks are still flying and everything. And she's like, oh my god, yeah, um. By the way, I've got a boyfriend now, and this guy is so cute, but I hate how they make him look like a third wheel. And I know this isn't really important, but I pick up on stuff like this and the manager's coming all the way from the back and he has a sourpuss look on his face and it's locked on to Josh. <laughs> oh Jesus, Josh, look at you. Go clean yourself up. No, not the customer bathroom. Is something wrong? I am so confused. Um, is he dirty? Okay, because the only thing I can figure is Oceana Food Mart. Okay, so he's wearing a uniform. Hers is closed. I, I don't, I don't get it. It's bad enough you've seen your fiance or ex-fiance with some other guy, but then your manager screams at you right in front of him. And you can tell this guy feels bad. Like he's like, uh, something you want to tell me? Like, you know, something going on here? And he's just trying not to smile. What is that face? <laughs> Yo, that's the face that someone makes when they know that shit's gonna go south. He's like, you're gonna fuck him, are you? Look on your face, bitch, you're gonna fuck him. The stupid girl's dad is called, and apparently he's a cop, and she is the nastiest person to him. I could never speak to my parents like this. Like, what the hell? You're an asshole, but you're wrong and strong. What about this? I'm gonna process you this time. You can spend the day in locker. And what do you think that's gonna do? Maybe it's the wake-up call you need. Piss off. What do you think your mother- Piss off! Bitch. Bitch. Oh my god. Holy shit. I must have grown up in a completely different fucking planet or galaxy, because even if I was thinking that, I can't let that even show on my fucking face. My pores would have to keep themselves shut so it doesn't give away that that's how I'm really feeling at the time. And I wouldn't dare. Oh my God. Maybe if you had arrested your daughter the first time around, the shit wouldn't have happened. Why don't you stop coming to save her and let somebody else take the call? And then you have these people that will look at their parents when they do something shitty and their parents don't help them and then say, well, they gave up on me. Instead of taking responsibility for the, oh my, oh my God. I don't know why that annoys me so much. Okay, honey, you're being a bad girl. <laughs> oh 
no, you're being a bad dad. Anyway, my guy Julian shows up because he has to do one last robbery to get his brother out of a situation that he's in, which this is another one of those things that you just don't do. If your brother got himself in a situation because of his bad decisions, don't disrepute yourself by putting yourself in the same position. That doesn't make any sense. How was I going to stop your brother from doing it? And then this guy has the nerve to tell the boss that, yeah, well, my brother is going to be let go after this. Stupid idiots, I swear. Her boyfriend comes up and shows up. I don't know why he's still around. Freaking losers, man, I swear. Guy with the V-gutter. I mean, gutter, gutter. Nutter. Apparently he's having a good time with his girlfriend in the car. All right, hold on. Let's roll that back a bit. Hold on. Right. Ah, damn. Okay. All right. All right. That's good. That's nice. <clears throat> Boyfriend goes back in his van to wallow and lick his wounds. He was upset because he lost his job. And then the girl was like, I'll get back your stupid job. Oh my God. Like the person who stole from the store that just fired you is going to have any leverage in helping you get back your job after you basically encouraged her by being an accomplice according to them. Yeah, he's freaking living in a completely different world that is not subject to reality. And then why would you let her do it? Be a man, go back. Tell the girl, screw you, and go back and get your job yourself. Then a robbery gets out of hand when Julian realizes he's not the only one doing it. The cop, the girl's father, had noticed something was shady about Julian going into the store, and now he's in the middle of a hairy situation. A girl has already been killed, and now guess who's on the floor up next to the chopping block? Josh's ex fiance The guy warns him to not get any closer, and I swear, this is one of the reasons why sometimes you want to punch the characters. Don't be a hero, mate. Stay back! Tina. No! Stop it! <laughs> what? The guy just said stay back and you're inching closer. It's almost like you want her to be killed. Yeah, kill a bitch. That's what you get for leaving me. Then everyone's saved by the uh, earthquake. Remember all those birds that were flying earlier on from one direction? Yeah, well, they had enough of a chance to listen to the birds. Any unusual animal behavior in your vicinity should always be taken as a warning. You should have run away. What fuck is she screaming for? And what kind of stupid stock scream was that? Why is she screaming? She's not even looking at the person. Why, why are you screaming? And the little girl doesn't sound like that when she screams. Oh my god, that was so cringe. You could have done without the stupid sound effect that a whole bunch of people use on their YouTube videos. My god. We can also see where the water had receded, and usually it goes back a whole lot more than that. But I guess it's coming in now. People see this. Nobody noticed the water was receding? I mean, I don't know. I, I, this seems to be taken at a time where tsunamis were already a thing. So with there being lifeguards on duty, would they not have told the people, hey, uh, the water's receding. There's likely gonna be a tsunami, and all the, the birds are acting like like, there are so many warnings, but I guess there's no lifeguards, right? Oh. I like how the surfer dude sees the wave and he's like, ooh, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> the poor guy. Oh my god, I feel so bad for him. But what would be ironic is if he actually went there and he was riding the wave and he lived. And he's like, why is everyone running? And he sees the wave go on land. Like, I don't know. I just think about the weirdest things. But I can totally see him riding this wave and being fine. But that's not how tsunamis work. I feel like this is one giant PSA of telling people how not to act and what not to do. Oh my god. And this poor girl. Can you imagine being the chick out on the beach trying to get your tan on and you don't have your bra on? <laughs> And then a tsunami comes and you're getting washed away with your tits flopping in the air. Oh my God, so fucking embarrassing. Dude, and then if something happens to you, people just find you with your tits out. It, oh, she's good. She rolled over. She does have a top on. Okay, good. Not like that's gonna really do anything with the waves trying to strip everybody of their unnatural garments. Oh, so they do have lifeguards. Were you sleeping on the job, Tommy? What are you doing? What, did you not train for this? You just sitting there. Oh my God. What, what are you, what is the purpose? <sighs> I do like the animation for the tsunami because that's how it actually looks. Okay, it does look kind of like ass when you look at it closely, but that's how a tsunami looks. It rushes into the inland with the force of a thousand Zeus farts. The special effects are, they're all, they're okay a little bit. When you're wrapped up in the story, you don't really care. And I've seen much worse, trust me. Everyone ends up underwater and now they have to fight for survival. Sookie sookie. But of course, it's a shark movie, and we've not seen a shark since Rory was killed. In the parking lot, 
I like how they show that water pressure is a thing. So technically, there would still be air in the car. And they use like two or three different dogs for these shots, which is so adorable. But there are dead people out there, not just from the tsunami, but because something else has been brought in with all the water. I must say that this movie and situations like this are way more realistic if you have like a whole bunch of sharks. So now they're desperately trying to find a way to get out of here. Why does his face look like a pair of leather shoes? How cool is this though, to be in a car underwater? How are you? I am under the water. As these two comic reliefs are fighting, Bully senses that there's something outside. Bully's a little Pomeranian. It's cute. Reminds me of my old girl. I miss her so much. Like it actually breaks my heart every time I see another Pomeranian. It's right about now that everyone realizes that there is something in the water. Besides just junk. The security guard gets pulled underwater and everyone's freaking out. The cop's daughter tries to help him and he desperately tries to go up, but then he completely loses his head. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. It just is. The loser boyfriend of the cop daughter person, thief, I'll just call her thief because that's what she is, is awake and he survived too because he was inside his van. He popped the glass and made his escape, but now he's trying to find if there are any survivors. We have to get out of this car. I can't stay here much longer. <laughs> oh, my girl. By the way, see how short that dog's nose is? That palm's got a 90 degree profile angle. The other one has a long snoopy nose and looks more like he's done with everyone's shit. The water. And apparently so is the shark that has discovered that the humans are inside the car and is desperately trying to get in. It doesn't help that they're freaking out every moment. The shark can sense vibrations and noise in the water and now they have to get out. They go through the sunroof and beg the other guy to help them. This is the only thing this guy is good for. He becomes a hero as he tries to distract the shark. Then the sad part comes in. You see, there's an electric wire hanging over the water and they have to shut down the circuit so that the whole place doesn't go up in, in, in I guess, electricity? Which I'm like, does that really happen? I mean, I can only see the people standing on the metal shelves as an issue because then they get electrocuted if they're not grounded, which some of them are, I don't know. But the Singapore guy is like, I have an idea. Why don't you guys tie me up with Ziplocs in this big cage thing and then make a hose for me to breathe through so I can reach the storage room and flip the breakers? You know, and the shark won't bite me because I'm in this thing and all I'm thinking is these little wire mesh things are not enough to save you if the shark does decide to bite you. But he's hoping that if the shark thinks that he's a cage or an inorganic object, he'll leave him alone. Hopefully he's not bleeding or cuts himself on one of these metal pieces. But the first thing I'm thinking seeing him get wrapped up in this is, uh, you have cans tied around your feet? What happens if you drop the mouth hose and you can't get back up? You're gonna drown in that thing. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that that's a setup to final destination yourself. The guy descends in the water and the great white goes to say hello. And I can imagine how creeped out he is and everyone is waiting wondering what's gonna happen the great white is like boop <laughs> boop got your nose <laughs> all right i'll see you later turns out he's not interested because it's a freaking cage so it works we've now established that the shark will leave him alone but can he make it to the storage room to turn off the electricity it's already predictable this movie you know exactly what's gonna happen they're gonna run out of rope and he's gonna have to sacrifice himself of course dead bodies are everywhere and you have to not freak out or drop the mouthpiece and there it goes that's the last of it and he gets to the breakers and of course that's the last of the hose there is no more and he's like but it's right there and i guess i'm gonna have to sacrifice myself and the thing is i don't even think that like if he put the hose back in his mouth it would just have air in it. Personally, at this point in time, I know time is of the essence because that wire could drop into the water. It's literally hovering right over the water. But I would have been like, look, just so I don't die um, and I make a mistake and turn off the wrong thing, let me keep the mouth hose thing on and try to take off the cans off my feet. But like I said, time is of the essence. And it's one of the situations where this guy is a freaking hero. He's a badass. And he's like, fuck that mouthpiece. And she's like, no. He's like, I got this. And he can hardly move with all that metal on him he turns off the breaker or the electricity and the wire is nullified but seriously this is the other sad part about this movie because i really like this guy and he is struggling and he's like oh my god i think he's oh god i think he's regretting his decision because he really needs air and he can't get himself above water because the cans are weighing him down and remember people help him put this stuff on and this was so freaking heartbreaking like why do they kill off all the likable characters Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. After that very sad ordeal, Julian is like, you know what? We gotta catch this shark. And this girl totally wants the D. Two pieces of plastic apart, like that. 
Thanks. <sighs> this guy tries to distract the shark to help the others swim away. Meanwhile, the people in the market try to find another way out of here, which is through the vents. They swing the manager from the top, and he opens the vents. Nothing scary is gonna be in there, right? To jump scare him so he falls into the water? <laughs> Ugh. Why do they look like freaking albino spiders? Gross! Now he's dangling over the water, and of course, this is the setup for every freaking shark movie when somebody's hanging over the water, because sharks see that, and they're like, oh, you cute little thing. You thought I couldn't get your ass up there, didn't you? I'm okay! <laughs> It's not funny what's happening to him. Mm. It's funny the reaction of the other guy. You look at their, their face. <laughs> oh my god. Dude. Oh my god, Julian's still holding the ring. <laughs> 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 People are really starting to get anxious. The cop's leg is hurt, and he wants to go over for the hook so that he can make bait for the shark. He's trying to be a hero, and I get it, but honestly, if this was my dad, I would have done the same thing the chick ended up doing. No matter what happens, you get her out of here, okay? Diamond! I do not blame that girl. I would have done the same thing for my dad. No way I'm gonna let my dad get killed in front of me. You're gonna mourn my death, dad. I'm not gonna mourn yours. Cause I can't handle that. It's your responsibility to suffer for your children. So I'm dying first. She makes it over, gets the hook and gets the meat. And before then she had stabbed the shark in the nose or beat it on the nose, which is the perfect thing to do if a shark is attacking you. She gets back to safety and now they have a way to catch the shark. Turns out this guy, this crazy guy that can't act was the robber all along. He took off his mask and put it on someone else. I mean, I already knew it with his crazy ass. Freaking weirdo. He just lays things on a little bit too thick. I don't know. He's the only actor that does that. What about the mask on the body? <laughs> Was me, mate. <laughs> okay. Everyone knows you don't mess with Julian McMahon. He puts a spear through the guy's freaking chest and puts the hook right in his neck. And he's like, you want to use the girl as bait? How about you get used as bait, bitch? And then he does that whole thing he does. Man, Cole's so hot. And the shark takes the bait. You might be wondering, well, what was the point of them getting the freaking pork leg? Yeah, what was the point? Because now that it's tasted live human flesh, why would it want a cold, dead piece of meat? It just so happens to work out that the hook is just perfectly placed inside the shark. And there it goes, which gives them the out to get away. The Pomeranian bully had made it out because the boyfriend threw the dog to the shark as bait, which is what always happens. And I already knew the dog lived because I looked at the site do the dogs die, and I'm so freaking happy. That made me enjoy this so much more. Look at how cute he is. The dumb loser guy has an idea, and he's like, you know what? Me and my girl had this code knock that we do. So if I bang on the pipes with that code knock, I could see if she's up there. Then she's like, oh, I hear him. Ryan, he's down in the parking lot. That's why I left him. Then she goes after him. Again, I probably we would do the same thing and the cop is like no go after my daughter now please you have to follow her you have to take care of my daughter and he's like god damn it man why do i have to do everything freaking girl's not gonna look freaking sleep with me why do i care they get down there but water pressure is a thing so if they open all the doors it's going to be flooded with upstairs and it's gonna drown everyone downstairs so they close one of the doors before opening up the other one and they're in the car park but that's when we figure out that there was a shark downstairs and upstairs obviously because shark's not gonna to go through the doors itself the thief girl is like look my dad has guns in the back of his car because he's a cop see so josh takes out the gun while the girl tries to distract the shark and she's like hurry up he takes the shotgun and he tries to shoot it in the water and then jumps into the water like freaking die hard and he's like this is for rory you mother f yeah bitch right up in your throat yeah boom he was very smart also by putting the gun right up against the shark's neck because as we know or we should know if you fire a gun underwater and some guns won't even fire underwater but if you do they're not gonna move very far the bullets i mean the bullets are probably gonna move a few feet because the water is like 80 percent denser than air meanwhile this shark is still caught but he's not gonna stay caught forever they have the bright idea where they're going to try and electrocute the shark why does she always look like she's 
she's seeing something totally unbelievable for the first time in her life with every single shot that she's in. Ugh, I guess that means we're gonna be together now, huh? Cole is like, everybody out of the water! The building is falling down all around them. The guy's like, all right, I'm Rambo now. And the gun doesn't fire. And he's like, shit. Yeah, because it's wet. Jump, bitch, jump! He holds up and holds on for dear life. And he's like, let me use the tasers instead because that counts as electricity, right? While he's in the water and fry this fish. And the shark gets a nice little jolt of electricity running through its nether regions and it has a wonderful orgasm before it dies. Now, being that their nose is very sensitive, can you imagine how painful this is? <laughs> it's the most sensitive part in your whole face and getting electrocuted through your nose. Well, the new plan is he wires this up to the battery so they can blast away out of the building because they were blocked in before. Everyone is safe. Yay. yippee ki -yay. I'm so glad the puppy's okay. He runs to freedom. The helicopters are overhead. Cole comes out and this girl is like, you were so getting laid right now. I mean, not right now, but you know, soon. And you think that's the end of the movie, but with every single one of these stupid sci-fi things, they have to do one of these numbers. Can I get a moment of your time? All right, sorry, it started like that. But it was a good movie. I was actually shocked that people gave it such a horrible rating. And I got really curious as to why they gave it that rating. So I decided to look at one of the reviews. This was a really dumb movie. First of all, the beginning made no sense. That part of the satellite or space station that broke off and fell to Earth for one would not have ever made it through the atmosphere with anything living on it. What? I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Um, are we? I think you got the wrong movie, dude. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. Was very impressed by this movie. Had everything. Drama, romance, friendship, hidden political messages, exposed to social... Political messages? What are you talking about? The shark part of the movie happens after 24 movies. It's fun. Yeah, it, it was a dumb movie, but it was surprisingly good. I actually found myself wanting to finish it. So you guys should definitely check it out on Tubi TV or rent it for like two bucks at some Walmart. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.